Okay, so let's get back to what we were talking about. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, the faith claims of the Bible are really, really hard to defend and justify, but the truth claims of the Bible are all over the Bible, and they're actually really easy to justify, and they appear on almost every page, even in the dreaded Old Testament. <gasps> the Old Testament. <gasps> Old Testament. Even there. Book of Exodus. There's tons in the Book of Exodus. What are they? They're powerful metaphorical truths. Powerful metaphorical truths. Capital T truths. Now, I'm starting to spell one out. Let's take, for example, this is just off the top of my head. I could do this all day with almost every page of the Bible. Let's take, the greatest amongst you shall be the servant of all. What is that? That is a principle of leadership. That's an actual quote from Scripture. The greatest amongst you shall be the servant of all. I forget exactly where that is. I think it's in Matthew. I could go through the book of Matthew, the first, you know, five pages of Jesus' ministry, and on almost every page I could find powerful metaphorical truths. Like I said... You know, Richard Carrier comes along, tries to break up the party. Hey, Jesus didn't even exist. Doesn't matter. Sorry, Richard. Really honest to God, doesn't matter. Really honest to God, doesn't. Um, I tried to spell this out. I'll spell this out more in the future. Jesus can be a fictional metaphorical construct. The principle of the Bible remains and endures. Why? Because it's the principle that is the truth. Not the story that contains the truth. As I will now demonstrate. Um, I'll try to say this as quickly as possible, but for example, there, there, there's some debate nowadays that I wasn't even aware of until I became, uh, you know, started doing this on Twitter that the Exodus might not be true. I, I guess there's a controversy because they can't find any actual evidence to back up the fact that the Exodus actually occurred. I don't know that much about it. Uh, apparently there's no shards of pottery or whatever in the wilderness where supposedly six million people walked, so, so there should be some sign of it. Now, there are two ways. I'm a little bit interested in this because I follow it a little because this is interesting to me. But most of these controversies aren't of any interest to me whatsoever. I promise. No, really not. <laughs> I promise. I, I don't spend any time thinking about them at all. Why? Because there's no interest to in me whatsoever. And I'm a Christian apologist. Um, okay, so they're debating over whether there's, whether exodus happened because they can't find evidence. Now, there's two counter-arguments uh, potential counter arguments. The most obvious to me is maybe it was less than six million people. Maybe it's like forty thousand people. Then there probably wouldn't be any evidence. Then, then you gotta, you know, then why does the Bible say forty thousand people? Yada yada yada. Boring, boring, boring. Exactly. You're falling asleep listening to me. I'm falling asleep talking about it. Um, <laughs> and the other counter argument is the, what's the other counter argument? Oh, it might have happened at a different time than the Bible says it is. Okay. Once again, boring, boring, boring. Let's just take as our starting point. Fine. Moses doesn't exist. <gasps> you just gave up the whole. No, I didn't give up shit. I did, excuse me. Pardon my French. I didn't give up Jack Diddley Squat. Why? Because it's the enumerated principle that is important. Now, let us go back again. Let us turn ourselves and our Bible, little children, to the, to the scripture that I just mentioned. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Uh, what's the scripture I just mentioned? The greatest amongst you shall be the servant of all. That is a principle of enumerated leadership. Uh, no, that's a principle of leadership. That's a precept about being a good leader. That is backed up in the Bible a hundred times. Moses himself, they say, he alone was faithful in all my house. Now, I can quote that. He alone was faithful in all, all my house. In other words, they're saying, Moses is a servant leader. Be like Moses because he was a lot like Jesus. Then they show you 50 different stories about Jesus washes their feet. To, to do what? Underscore the fact that he was a servant leader. Then you go to Philippians 2.5. Jesus, in the form of God, denied himself, took up, uh, what, what, I forget the exact scripture, what is it? Uh, humbled himself, humbled himself, and uh, I forget, Philippians 2.5, look it up. Um, the, the basic gist is he's humbled himself. Made himself of no account whatsoever. So what's the principle What's the easily defendable, scientifically verifiable principle? That it is better to be a servant leader. Duh and duh. Does Moses need to have been an actual person for me to understand the sentence? Moses alone was faithful in all my house? No, he doesn't. Does there need to have been an actual exodus for me to understand that principle? No. 
Honestly, there doesn't. <laughs> the principle is what the principle is the enduring truth in the Bible. The principle is the enduring truth. Yeah, maybe Exodus is real, and I'm on the side of the person who says it really happened. Knock yourself out, prove it. But I can't do that. I'm not an archaeologist, and I honestly don't care. I honestly don't, because I've got no dog in that particular fight. Honestly, the principle alone is what is the, the enduring principle alone. Now, let's, let's investigate the principle itself. Is it better to be a servant leader? To me, that's axiomatic. Think about how much better your job would be if, if powerful, how much better the country would be. How much better would everything in our lives be? If, if you went to work with the C, just think about it, gosh. If you went to work with the powerful CEO who, who actually tried to embody the principle of servanthood in his leadership, wow, what a better world it would be. I don't even think I have to spell it out for you because it's so, it's so crystal clear, it's so obvious. But let's try and spell it out, I bet you, and it's scientifically verifiable. Go look at studies on servant leadership and come back and you show me. I, I'm just guessing it's scientifically verifiable and somebody's already started to verify it because it's so patently obvious. It's a capital T truth. Does it matter if Moses existed for that to be true? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Why? Because I understand the principle. He alone was faithful in all my house. I got that scripture planted in me and that scripture speaks to the truth of the story, the principle undergirding the story, the metaphysical substrate, as Peterson will tell you. Do you understand? It's not that complicated and it's not that hard and it's easy to defend the Bible along these lines. I could do it a hundred times a day and I'll win 83% of the arguments. I mean, you say, well, I do win 100% of the arguments. I don't know. I'm not that good at debating. I'm really not. I swear, I'm really not that good at it because I don't know. You would think I'd be great. I thought I was going to be great. I'm not that good. I don't know why I'm not that good. I, I, not really sure what my agenda is, you know. I feel bad for the opponent. I don't know why I'm not that good. I'm just really not that good. You go look at my debates. I'm all right. Holy cool, he beat me as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> not by much, but he, yeah, it kind of did. I don't know. I didn't have enough facts. I don't, I'm not actually sure why I'm not that good at debating. You'd think I'd be great. Yeah, why? Because I'm really pretty sharp. <laughs> but, you know, really not that good. Promise. I'm okay. I'm a decent debater. So I could win 83% of the debates on the subjects. I don't know, because someone will think of something clever and outmaneuver me, and then I'll have to defend that. That's, that's why Christians get killed in debates. Okay, first off. Because some clever little rapscallion like a Matt Dillahunty redefines the parameters of the debate right in front of your face. All of a sudden, you've got to debate something that is hard to defend. So we get killed. You know? Oh, yeah? Why, is Jonah, why did Jonah live in the whale? Uh, duh, duh, um, duh. <laughs> then you do something stupid and complicated to try and disguise the fact that you don't have a really good answer. <laughs> why? Tell me how Jonah lived in the whale. Um, um, well, you know, if you look at the original Greek, it's not a whale. He's talking about a big fish. <laughs> oh, yeah? How does that help your case? Um, 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 Kalam! <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do. <laughs> really hard to do. But if you stick to the principles... Defend the principle of servant leadership. The only person going, no, it'd be better if a, if a, if a, if a leader was a tyrant <laughs> is an is a evil jerk. <laughs> the only person arguing against you would be some idiot or evil psychopath. Easy. It's really easy to defend the principles of the Bible, the capital T truths of the Bible. The reason, because the Bible at least is a storehouse of ancient wisdom, at the very least, if it's not the inerrant word of, this is why Peterson kind of thinks it may be the word of God. Why? Because there's so much revealed truth in it. It's on every single page. Every, uh, maybe not every page. Okay, maybe, maybe not the book of Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the book of Ruth. I don't know, man, there's a couple places where there's less. But it's easy to defend the Bible along these lines. Why? Because it's simple. Simple. Does Jesus have to have, have been a real person to defend the Bible? And he says, no. He can be the embodiment of an ideal, mythological construct, a fictional construct, if you will. As I pointed out, what makes fiction, what separates, you know, a, a great literature from lousy literature, same idea. They're, they're batting around powerful philosophical concepts and principles and ideas. 
Uh, that's all for now because I don't want these belonging in 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll go further with it. All right. Amen.